in uh, Zoom and then uh, sharing their presentation there. So give us just a little time for them to synchronize and jump in. And you will see them here also now on that screen. So everyone that sits here that wants to follow, you can follow here. Anyone else can also follow through the Zoom link that we passed around. Uh, so you can also use it uh, and see it in your mobile device while enjoying a beautiful cocktail down in the garden. So um, because they won't stay here, they really are in Kuching. And uh, so are our two other speakers. They're both in Italy. Um, so we have two more Italians and uh, two Malayan Chinese, uh, uh, yes, New, New Zealand uh, blends. So, okay. So I'm just looking over. Uh, Kushakovsky, how are we? Um, I can ask him to start the video, I guess. Okay. So we'll just wait. So Kenny or Raven, if you, if you guys can hear us, just jump in. Okay. Mariano Peluso is also... Live, okay. Audio of Zoom is on mute. Oh, I'm muted. Herr Guzakowski, ich bin ausgeschaltet. I'm muted. Okay. Yes. Dann schreiben Sie. Okay, also jetzt brauche ich dann. I'm I'm off for the international uh, uh, speakers or, or visitors or participants. I'm just here for you now. So uh, he will now switch through, and then we will see um, Dr. Kenny Lee Witting first, and then um, Ravensun Kwok, who created some espresso innovations during the pandemics. This is quite interesting what they did, um, because in Malaysia we also had extremely hard lockdowns, so a little bit the, the Chinese way, as we now also saw it in Shanghai, as you see. I think yesterday they freed some first areas of Shanghai, some smaller parts with 22 million. So imagine. <laughs>
this part, this huge space is reserved for making espresso and all the equipment, the grinders that we invest in, the espresso machines and various gadgets, you know, depending on how, how geeky you want to go into measuring and, and weighing. Um, so a lot of expenses actually go into producing good espresso. And with that said, most customers don't realize that espresso is actually the building block of most coffee beverages on the menu. So they might know their favorite drink, but they might not know how it's made exactly. They just know that this is the drink that they like. And not to forget the speed factor, the espresso is quick to make. And that is why some people spell espresso wrongly with an X. They think it's espresso because it's so fast. Um, yes, that does happen. And in the fast moving business environment, I think the shorter the time that you, you make a product, the higher the turnover. So the utility side of an espresso is quite valuable in this sense. So like any business, the food and beverage market, the coffee industry can be just as unpredictable and fast changing. So how are we supposed to keep up with the market and not lose our core identity, which is to promote and sell specialty coffee? And how should we expand the market and be more innovative during hard times, like what Kenny had just mentioned just now during the pandemic. So these are huge questions, but since our focus is still espresso today, here's the million dollar questions. The one question, how to make people consume more espresso without actually drinking espresso? Right. So they already drink it in a lot of the classics, the cappuccinos, the latte, but there's a lot more possibilities in that. So I would like to just simply share um, our approach in thinking when we come to um, asking, answer, trying to answer this question. So I would always start from very basic questions, probably not very complicated it looks very simple as well. And that is, first of all, we need to ask ourselves, how will it be used? So if we're not just serving it like the Italians, how are we going to use this? Where is this going to end up? And always have the end result in mind. For the difference in process, we'll cater to, um, we'll cater to it as a mean to the end. So we always have to think about where, where will this end up? It's a very simple example. Um, even as milk coffees, when we make the espresso, we always have to think about what kind of um, milk coffee are we making? And therefore, not only the espresso, even the milk, we need to texture it in a certain way and maybe add something to it like cocoa powder on top. We also have to think about um, the extent of where it will go. Is it going to be a takeaway beverage? Um, do we need to make it extra hot? Or is the espresso made and be kept for later use? And then the question is, how much do we know about the ingredients of making espresso. So we have to understand um, what we want to get out of the coffee and therefore knowing what coffee to use. So the example just now, um, when we are in Malaysia, we know that people here, they prefer much darker roast. They like the, um, some of them even like the burnt aroma and the, the bitter aroma because that is what they're used to. We like um, the carbonized, like full carbonized coffee. We like it. <laughs> yeah. So the, it would be very different to, for example, a Scandinavian coffee drinker. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's really, um, 
heaven and earth, I guess, the difference. So very simple things like how fresh is the coffee? What are the um, origin profile, the terroir, like the presenter just now mentioned, the roast profile, um, even down to the technical grind size ratio and all that. So how, how much do we know about what we're extracting before we actually use it is also very important. And then it's the Barista 101 thing, right? How it's being extracted, what ratio do we use? What recipe do we use? What's the pressure on the machine? What type of machine it is used? Because this will all produce a very different espresso. And the utility side of an espresso is also um, a very, it's like a ruler for barista. Every barista will need to know how to calibrate uh, an espresso before they start their shift. <clears throat> And now it comes to the, the more um, science-inspired part. And as Kenny mentioned, um, this is also very much inspired by the coffee consulate coffeeology courses that we attended. And that is how do we treat espresso after it's extracted? Um, and there's a time factor there immediately, for example. So, the basic things we know is, you know, we need to keep the cup warm. So when we extract the espresso, it goes into a warm cup. It doesn't cool down immediately. But if you break that down into more details, um, it doesn't have to be warm. It could be cold, depending on what application you might need to use espresso for. So very simple examples. A long black is, is, is extracting espresso into hot water. Ice long black would be extracting espresso onto cold water and then add ice. And then we have something called espresso on the rock and that is inspired by a whiskey drink and that is extracting onto ice directly. Frozen espresso, like Kenny mentioned, is what you see in the picture. There is no ice to dilute the espresso, but we cool down, uh, we, we freeze the utensils and we put it in um, an ice jar just to make sure the espresso will cool down as much as possible when we extract that. And that will actually lock in more aroma and stopping espresso to aerate and oxidize too much. Um, there are also other things we can consider like extracting the espresso into um, condiments like chocolate sauce so that you know the chocolate sauce can utilize the heat and immediately melt into the espresso when we want to make for example like an ice mocha we can do that because if you add chocolate sauce later into the ice coffee it might not be able to melt nicely So I think, as Kenny, Kenny mentioned, I think knowledge and science will help very much with these hands-on experiments as well, um, probably in the realms of physics and chemistry. It will help us better understand why we do what we do and the effects behind it, right? And then we're going to explore like different possibilities of adding and take away um, from the espresso. So what do we add into espresso later or what do we add the espresso into? And we can also think about what do we want to take away from the espresso? So there are some cafes with practices whereby when they extract the espresso, they purposely skip the first two seconds of the extraction and then they capture the rest. And some barista would do the other way around they would capture the first 10 seconds maybe or 15 seconds of the espresso and then cut off early. Um, maybe you can call that a ristretto. But these very minimal um, differences, they actually, there's meaning and, and, and um, impact behind it. 
in terms of taste and in terms of flavors. So the devil is always in the detail. And when we think about adding into espresso or taking away from espresso, sometimes it's not about what we add into espresso, but also how much you add into the coffee. Um, there, there was this experiment I remember as part of the uh, coffeeologist course that is adding sugar into coffee. So as simple as that, we add just a little bit, like not even a teaspoon, but probably 10% of a teaspoon, as little as you can think. think, think of granular sizes. And as we increase that amount, we can literally taste the difference that the sugar makes. So sometimes, you know, like people like Kenny, he's a purist, he wouldn't add sugar or milk into his coffee. But I think sometimes we don't have to be so close minded, especially when we try to approach uh, coffee drinkers who don't take black coffee, we can maybe ask them to try with some sugar, and then slowly take away the sugar, just to, you know, like boiling a frog slowly, <laughs> then they, they suddenly realize that Oh, so the black coffee with less sugar can actually taste good. And then eventually they might go with without sugar even. Uh, in this picture, what if you're curious, what we are adding the espresso into is actually just a sparkling water. So I think sparkling water is very common in Europe when we were there, usually you can choose between the sparkling and the non-sparkling water when you drink it. So it's something very basic and, and, and um, you can find it anywhere. And, and that is the point here. Like when we think about all these basic things like air, water, ice, you know, uh, milk, tea, even, and all these sugar or the simple con con condiments, um, it's often about how much do we want to add and do we have the right ratio that we're looking for. So beyond that, if we want to expand further and think outside of the box, think outside of basic ingredients, we can also think about, you know, um, in a three dimensional way, like how do we change the texture of an espresso-based coffee. So if you think about some people like to um, drink bubble tea, I don't know if, if all of you know what a bubble tea is. Some people call it boba. It's very popular in Asia and that's basically just tea and milk with some chewable tapi um, pearls that's made from tapioca powder. Yeah, so some people like to to be able to chew on something or have something, you know, um, some texture to their drink. And um, this is when I invented this drink, which I call Chew Tea Espresso. It's supposed to be something like a bubble tea, but less sinful, uh, less sweetened and um, less carbs in there. So um, less chances of diabetes, and that's why you see that so-called <laughs> diabetic. So what I'm trying to say is, um, you know, us as cafe owners, we sometimes have more time and resources to be more creative with coffee um, compared to home brewers and non-coffee business owners. We can try out different um, possibilities, and who knows, you might create something new and, and trending. So this is basically Earl Grey tea. What you see, the black um, thing on top and the syrup is actually honey. So the idea is to, um, you know, there's espresso in there. It's like a double shot of espresso. Um, the idea is for people who enjoy the aroma of Earl Grey tea and they want to be slightly more healthy, but they want to drink something sweet like a frappuccino, like an ice blended drink. So when I combine all these, um, you can taste the coffee, you can enjoy the coffee, you can enjoy the, um, all the benefits from the caffeine. At the same time, you can taste the aroma from the tea and the floral aroma from the honey when it 
also sweetens the drink and it's ice blended. So yeah, it, it fulfills a lot of wishes when we um, think outside the box. And I think food science can make more possibilities um, in the future if we understand more about flavor molecules and, and how they interact with each other. So these are just some examples um, of drinks that we create um, during different seasons um, with spices that we can find easily locally um, and also think about what may be in season, what may not be in season and make use of that. Okay, so apart from drinks, as Kenny mentioned, in situations like the pandemic, um, when people can't come to a cafe and drink the coffee, what solutions can we come up with, you know, and maybe solve inconveniences for home brewers when they urge, when they urge for a cafe brewed coffee, but they can't get it. This is when we thought about um, putting espresso shots into these freezable capsules and have them um, make it easily. So I think we actually made video. Let me see if I can share that. So this is basically very simple. When we create this, we have to think about the user experience as well. Um, but I do know some Europeans don't like microwaves, but in Asian homes, microwaves are very common. So we thought if they want to make a quick espresso base coffee, um, they can just take it out of the freezer and just microwave it for less than one minute. So that is even faster than using an espresso machine or an espresso capsule machine. Um, and after it's been made, uh, it's thawed, you can basically put it into anything, right? You can use it as a coffee drink and you can still do latte art even though it doesn't have the crema anymore. So, you need crema to make latte art, that is a myth. <laughs> yeah, so we can think about all sorts of possibilities here. You know, office, uh, office workers who can't be bothered um, to go to cafes or people who work from home, stuck at home. Even some restaurants, they don't want to use maybe a full espresso machine setup. They can maybe just use this instead. Let me see. Let's go back to the slides. Okay. okay. This is also something else um, that we've made during the pandemic time. And that is basically um, just making a lot of espresso the same way. And we put it um, into an airtight bottle and we sell it as espresso concentrate. Um, but this obviously has a lot less, um, not as long shelf life because it's not frozen. And it's also a product that you see um, quite commonly in the market already, unlike the uh, frozen espresso. So my last point, to invent something or to create something is one thing. And then we still have to think about the business side of things is a viable feasible and also the marketing right to invent is one thing to sell is another so 
a few points that we had to um, go through and some challenges is first of all pricing is the first thing to consider um, and sometimes this is the hardest part I mean depending on where you are you have to think about um, whether the local um, consumers actually appreciate this kind of product and also how much they're willing to pay um, how much do they believe in the product and then you have to make very simple instructions um, so people don't have to um, overthink on how to use it, make it as simple as possible. And then we also want to try and make people understand the product a bit more, understand the value that it can provide. And lastly, um, yeah, to, to push something into the market, we also have to think about different um, experiments with different medium, um, apart from photos and videos and, and all that. How else can we try to gain more awareness? So this is uh, some art that I created <clears throat> during the pandemic. Um, I just taught myself on how to use Procreate and, and made this poster to make more um, eye-catching um, social media posts so people can go like, oh, what is this? You know, this is actually a product that I can buy locally and that draws some interest as well. And that brings, that comes to, that brings me to the end of my presentation. Uh, thank you very much for your patience. And if you would like to see more um, of our work um, or my personal work, you can find me on Instagram or Facebook or website as I've listed here. Thank you. Thank you, Shay. I think is Dr. Schwartz back. Stefan. Hello. Oh, hello. If Stefan is not coming back, or if they are still having technical issues, um, who is the next presenter? Should I ask them to come on stage? It's me. It's me. Oh, hello. But uh, I cannot share my presentation. I, I really okay. Can Can anyone hear me already? Yes. Oh, now, now, yes. Yes. Hi. That's, yes, yes. I can that's hear. Good. So, uh, thank you so much, uh, Kenny and Raven, for your presentation. No um, we highly appreciated your insights into espresso innovation. As I said, we wanted four completely different speakers and four completely different approaches into coffee. So now after uh, we heard of the aromas with Ennio Cantagiani, we, we heard of these beautiful innovations. And uh, it's sad you couldn't see the room, uh, but there was a lot of uh, um, interest and uh, a lot of curiosity. I could see in the faces here from everyone. And... Um, so thank you for that. And uh, I think we'll have now a lot of uh, especially ice hockey fans here in Mannheim that are trying to make the espresso pucks uh, mm -hmm. for, <laughs> for the next uh, uh, ice hockey games. There's also some people from Munich. Uh, they're also playing ice hockey. I, I'm not looking at anyone here, Mr. Lente. Uh, okay. <laughs> you look so, <laughs> yeah. So thank you so much. Um, now I will just see, are there any questions here in the audience that you would like to ask uh, uh, Kenny or Raven? Or are you all happy? You can also reconnect with them through social media or um, at any other time. But if there's a quick question, otherwise we will ask Mr. Peluso to jump in. Yes. So then, oh yeah, here's one more question. Two more questions. Hi, <laughs> I just want to know uh, about the materials you are using for these packages. I mean, uh, we are trying to to reduce waste all over the world, and you are <laughs> creating these products which need plastic and stuff. Or do you find any kind of material for the packages of your frozen espresso, which are more amicable with the with the uh, environment? Yes, that's a very good point, actually. Um, especially, um, it's a big challenge also um, in this part of Asia uh, when it comes to recycling. 
Um, and I feel it the most because growing up in New Zealand, we always have to recycle our plastic and our paper. But, but here, it's, it's a very different lifestyle, very different practices, but we do try to look for ways to reduce our impact on the environment as well. Um, so in, in 2020, we've abandoned all our straws and we've um, changed to this rice straw. I think, let me see if I have some photos here I can show you. Yeah, so this is um, a picture I took for the campaign when we do the um, rice straw. Yeah, so this straw is totally edible. It's uh, made of, I think, wheat um, and rice, I believe. And there's obviously some other um, 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 ingredients in it that I'm not aware of. But you can Must definitely, probably um, be sticky rice, no? I think so. I think it's, uh, there's wheat, I think, in there. It's almost like chewing on pasta. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah, so the, the, the Italians might already have a solution if we go into the supermarkets. That's maybe why we didn't have a lot of pasta in the first pandemics. They used it as straw. Now I get the answer. <laughs> yes, but unfortunately, things like um, what you mentioned, the capsule, because uh, we have very limited resources here um, in order to find, not, not to say not to even mention like sustainable um, environmentally friendly packaging, but even normal packaging that looks fancier or popular packaging is very difficult to find over here. So what you see in the in, in our product in the frozen espresso is basically what we can find for people who use um, it as source containers. So they use this to for their ketchups and, and, and restaurants to put um, it has to be microwavable as well. So oh, yes. it's a bit possible, yeah, it has to be microwavable. So you yeah. know we are isolated in a in a small island in Borneo. So <laughs> the logistic and the, the options is always scarce here. So that's that's a big hard for us. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, but but that is a very important point, no doubt. Um, to think about the waste that we generate. Um, especially recycling as well. So we, we, we're open to suggestions or solutions as well <laughs> in the future, if you do have, um, that would be great. Okay, uh, Raven, just a quick one. Um, I'm just interested about your, uh, uh, the success of your approaches uh, 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 to, to um, involve more espresso to your customers. So you mentioned that you only had uh, 10 espressos per day. And uh, how many do you have now? Week. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, per week. <laughs> Less than 10 per week. <laughs> so um, how many do you have now? Well, now I think if, if we count the frozen espresso, then there will be more. But then, you know, th when they buy the frozen espresso, they add it into hot water, they add it to milk, they use it in countless ways that we can imagine. So I don't know how many of them actually drink it as it is, as espresso. So the answer is it hasn't really increased <laughs> because the question is how to make people drink more espresso without drinking espresso. So basically that means drinking espresso-based beverages. As I mentioned, espresso is the building block to most of the um, caf coffee beverages on a menu in any cafe apart from cold brew, ice strip, and pour over. Um, and, and pour over, like filter coffee, is very rare here as well, unlike, um, unlike in other parts of the world, unlike in G Germany, I think filter coffee is quite popular there. But here, um, people don't drink espresso, but they, they drink espresso-based coffee. So the lattes, the ice lattes, the cappuccinos and mochas, those are the go-tos, yes. So my point is, how do we, um, when we try to um, innovate, how do we go outside of these um, traditional classic drinks and create something like the chew tea espresso where we combine tea and espresso and other ingredients, like to expand into other categories of, of, of the beverage industry and, and that was the point that I was trying to get across. 
Yeah. So they're drinking espresso actually, but inside another beverage. So it's hidden. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the presentation, Raven and, and Kenny. Thank you to Malaysia. And I think you will have some nice dinner now. Yes. Yeah, well. <laughs> Ex <laughs> excellent. So thank you for joining us and, and making it possible to talk to us. So you see there is also some advantages out of the pandemics. We learned something new. So we, we can be together. We can talk uh, on ways we, we haven't imagined before. So let's keep the... The good traditions, but I hope that next time you're still here live uh, because, you know, you also need to support uh, airplane companies. Don't forget that. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah. Okay. So thank you so much. And greetings okay. down to Kuching, Malaysia. Uh, one last question. Uh, uh, can you maybe uh, send your presentation to, to Eric, uh, to our graphic guys, so that uh, later the one or the other that has interest uh, uh, could get this uh, presentation if it's okay for you? Yeah. Excellent. Because we also have the one from Ennio Cantagiani, so that if later anyone would like to 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 have more insights or or to look over these things again, just please let us know. And uh, yeah. And then uh, uh, again, thank you. And we will now switch over right to Italy. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And now we go to Italy. Uh, Hi. Bye. Bye. And uh, buongiorno Italia. Buongiorno. Sorry if I not uh, be, uh, if I not be there because <laughs> I uh, I would like, but I, I had a tour in Italy for uh, work, and uh, at this moment I see Milan, and uh, but I cannot miss uh, this event. So I'm happy to be here. So thank you so much. Uh, we we now have our next speaker, Mariano Peluso, and uh, Mariano is a data specialist and uh, he's one of the main heads of analyzing markets so most of the machine industry will know uh, Mr. Peluso uh, for the market data that he provides to understand uh, uh, customer behavior and markets market distributions and we ask him to specifically look over espresso which is not so easy <laughs> because uh, it's a very Italian subject but uh, yeah, yeah. Let's see. And uh, yeah, thank you so much, uh, Mariano. And uh, please, here yes, you go. I, I think technically I sh should be ready to go. Okay, I share my screen. Um, uh, yes, uh, uh, more than espresso in number. Uh, sure. okay. I'll, uh, do you see my presentation? And, uh, expressing number, I will talk about uh, uh, coffee number. We will see some uh, some data on coffee in Europe, but also we understand how the demand of coffee is changing. Uh, just uh, confirm me if uh, you can see my uh, my presentation, so I can uh, can start. Yes, we can see it. Okay, perfect. Okay. So uh, first of all, uh, we uh, we can uh, we can say that the pandemic has been an important challenge for the coffee sector. Uh, we saw um, that the the market uh, had a strong decline in the out of home, uh, but also an increase in the home consumption, an increase in the request of a, a coffee machine for home, and uh, uh, an increase in the use of online uh, channels for delivery or collect. So it's uh, we, so we can say at, at the beginning that the coffee is resilient, but the market will not be as before, and I will show you why. Uh, let's start with the number of coffee uh, of coffee in uh, in Europe. So this is uh, this is the uh, the global uh, the, the European coffee market the consumption in uh, in thousand ton. You can say in 2019 uh, we had uh, two million of uh, tons and declined by 4.4. Uh, compared to other to other market, this is uh, can be considered also a good result. Uh, um, so I uh, I told you that uh, that um, the coffee is resilient because uh, if you compare it to other sector uh, it was uh, there was not a strong decline but we have to see also internally at this number so we have to go in depth and if we uh, we consider 
the coffee market autumn, we uh, we now we can uh, we can see that uh, the decline uh, uh, has been at uh, also for 41 percent, but also to the, the recovery immediately the recovery and in a couple of years uh, probably the uh, the um, the market will uh, will uh, will return to the previous uh, to the previous data in terms of uh, total consumption. Another, uh, another outlook uh, that uh, I would like to show you is the difference between the two channels, the, the two markets, uh, Horeca and uh, offices. As you can see, uh, the, uh, the office market decreased, ma uh, decreased a little bit more than the, uh, the, the Horeca. Office market decreased a little bit more. Also because uh, while the Eureka started immediately to react, so also with the uh, delivery, uh, with the uh, takeaway, uh, the, the, the office uh, consumption uh, um, not, uh, not um, um, reflected the, the, policies, uh, the policies of uh, home working, of remote working that still now uh, are, uh, are, in, um, are in, uh, in course. For example, uh, if we we see also data of 2021, uh, we can see that the, uh, the Eureka market uh, increased by 23%, uh, but, but the office market only 149 uh, Also because uh, till now there are uh, the policy of home working. And this is uh, a, also an item that we have to analyze also in uh, this presentation. Uh, other, uh, other numbers that I just want to show you, uh, just for example, is the, uh, some European data on European country. We can, we can see that uh, more or less uh, all countries are in, in line for decline and increase and recovery of 2021, uh, only the United Kingdom because uh, there are other dynamics for um, policy for restriction that started later and finished. But more or less all main European countries had the same dynamics. So big country more or less had, the, had this, uh, this result. But uh, what is behind uh, at this number? We have to understand. Uh, we have to understand why the market is uh, declining in uh, out of home and uh, at home. So all uh, this dynamic. I would like to show you uh, the demand change. Well, uh, how is changing the demand of uh, uh, the demand of coffee in this year? So uh, the first thing that I would like to show you is that the pandemic has changed the time and the place of coffee break. So uh, the customers are becoming more demanding in terms of quality. They are using more online channels for reservation and delivery. And many people, as we have seen, uh, will continue to work at home also in the near future. So they will be more itinerant. And this change the place of, uh, of consumption of, co of coffee. Another, another characteristic uh, is that uh, the, the increasing request of a coffee machine that, uh, that try, people try to reproduce the quality of coffee cup in bar. This don't mean that uh, bar and restaurant are finished, but that the customer have a new expectation. After two years of pandemic, uh, the, the behavior of the consumer is a change and we have to act for this. So how to change? Um, I will give you just some point uh, to change. Uh, it's necessary to innovate the offer it's uh, to, uh, to avoid uh, our crowding also with the uh, standard, the high standard of hygiene, uh, to reconfigure interior space, uh, for example, to use uh, different, uh, different area of the, different area of the, um, of the location. And companies have to become increasingly, increasingly digital. It's, uh, it's okay, all these things seem, uh, seem simple, but uh, it's not, uh, the, the change is not uh, 
uh, a simple matter of blends. It's not a simple bet um, question of the delivery time or delivery cost. It's uh, not a, a more usability, but it's a mix of all these things because we have to rethink the complete experience and the way of the coffee has been served till now. So experience, this is the, uh, the word that we have to, uh, to focus. How to do the experience? Uh, we have to rethink uh, some, uh, some, some products, some service, this is uh, valid for coffee, but, but also for meal, for uh, all, co all coffee service, uh, that, uh, that is built for experience. For example, we could, uh, we could uh, separate the, the present experience with the, the online experience, and the channel should be managed also in, uh, independently. Uh, for example, not to replace the same, uh, if I go in a place to drink a coffee, to, uh, to eat a meal, do not have the same experience that I, uh, that I take one uh, when I, I order uh, or, or take away. Um, this is uh, seem, seem banal, but not easy because it's not uh, compared to quality of product, but is the, the, the supply of personal, personalized service this personalized menu, for example, is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is good that say, oh, uh, Mariano, welcome back here. I have a menu or a cappuccino or a vegan cappuccino just, uh, just for you because I know your test. I, you, I know that you are a customer. And uh, for this, uh, also the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the technology can, uh, can help. On the contrary, for the, for the delivery, we could think to a premium delivery, something like similar to Amazon, uh, that I, uh, I, I want a premium delivery with the better, uh, better quality compared to a standard delivery with different time. Or uh, we have to think also menu that travel well, because sometimes if some products, some coffee or some, uh, some meal are not used to be delivered, uh, it's better to not do this and to serve all this product at, uh, at the table, uh, because uh, it's, uh, for the experience, it will be different. So this is in term, uh, uh, this is something that we can change. Uh, I would like uh, to, so the future of coffee. We have, uh, we have said that the um, coffee is resilient, uh, but market will not be uh, the same. Uh, we, we, we saw that the consumers uh, are more demanding. Uh, in these uh, this last days, uh, we, or in last week, we have seen that the price of any product is increasing for the supply chain, for for the inflation, uh, uh, and someone say that the cost of a cup of coffee uh, is good that is increased, but uh, it is also dangerous because uh, the per the purchasing power of customers uh, is declining, uh, and uh, if we not offer something uh, behind the price, uh, will be a will uh, be a decline in the consumption and decline the, the, in the demand that will be a problem for the coffee service. So. Uh, how we can uh, react to this? Uh, with uh, this uh, uh, mix of quality, price, and service, with the experience. Uh, so we, uh, we can, uh, but we can be able to focus on what we can do best for, for serve with the exclusivity. So this is a possible way uh, to react to the, to the crisis. I, I finished. I don't know if there are some questions. Uh, can, can you hear me, Mariano? Yes, Am I, back? I hear okay, you. I'm, I'm back. Now, it's getting more exciting here because the house is making funny jokes with us. So it's getting dark here, which you can't see. That's the good news because you're not here. Um, mm. But 
we we will probably just be able to <laughs> turn back into the light here. It's you know it's like being in the cinema now. <laughs> now everyone is expecting popcorn or 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 or, okay. or some ice cream it's like, to come like around. Like cinema, cinema. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, uh, Mariano. Yes. And uh, are there some questions here in the room? Okay. Let me just see. They're yeah, usually a little shy. Yes, there's one. Wait, Ennio, you can also ask in Italian. Okay. Uh, buongiorno, Mariano. Sono, sono Ennio. <laughs> si, ciao. Um, I, I just uh, wanted to know how in Italy, specifically in Italy, uh, do you expect uh, Italy to change with so low price for uh, espresso? And when you increase for uh, 10 um, cents, the, there will be uh, everybody on the road to uh, manifest. So how <laughs> yeah. can Italy change without increasing the price of the espresso? Yes, uh, I uh, thank you for uh, for uh, for the questions. Uh, it's already it's already changing the price of coffee. It's already increasing uh, the uh, of 10 20 cent. Uh, at this moment uh, uh, it is accepted also because people uh, like to come back to the bar, uh, like to come back to the place uh, uh, the price are uh, increasing. Uh, the problem is uh, that uh, if uh, as I I show you, I showed in the presentation, if there is not nothing behind the increase of price, I don't know if uh, uh, in, uh, in, the long, uh, in the long run, uh, this will be accepted uh, from, uh, from people, because at the moment, uh, I, don't, I don't see uh, many, uh, many trouble about this, because the prices are already changed in Italy. Uh, I, the problem will be in the long run, so uh, I cannot answer to these questions <laughs> to, uh, to give you an exact uh, answer. I just have another question, uh, Mariano, yes. just uh, specifically on uh, what we call specialty coffee. So I know uh, Stefan Schwarz uh, doesn't like this term, but uh, have you, have you analyzed the specialty coffee movement during this uh, pandemic? Um, uh, yes, I, I see. As, uh, um, uh, we, we already have some, uh, some, uh, some, some data uh, because also in the past, uh, the, the consumer price, uh, uh, the specialty price, uh, the premium quality price, something. So this is probably the way and uh, uh, I saw many, uh, many more uh, uh, places that are trying to give an answer to, the, to this, uh, to this um, uh, increase of prices, uh, offering different qualities. It's not a complete specialty, in particular in Italy, but uh, some things on the way. Also because uh, uh, many people understood, also operators understood that uh, in this two year of pandemic, uh, uh, many people tried uh, to do coffee at home eh, and uh, uh, understood that there are not one coffee, but many coffees that they can do, many flavors that they can uh, choose. And uh, they, they cannot, uh, cannot come back. So if I go to the bar uh, and uh, I receive a, a simple coffee, I can accept one time, two times to pay much more, but not. And uh, many operators uh, are uh, starting to think to offer different quality with a different price. So uh, someone that want to, uh, to drink a simple coffee, pay one, uh, one euro. If you want to pay, uh, if you want a, a, a specialty that is uh, sometimes a special, sometimes a, a not really specialty, uh, you pay one, uh, one, uh, one euro and 20 or one euro and 30. So it's, uh, it's starting, but uh, in Italy in particular, is, uh, it's not so, so, so big this moment of specialty. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mariano. I also heard, I read it in the newspaper. There was, uh, and it was even going through TV here across Europe. There was an Italian restaurant that uh, increased the prices for espresso and that was sued 
<laughs> yes. or, uh, yes. that, that, that is curious yes. in, in Germany to hear of that. So I don't know how many of, of you guys have heard of it, but uh, that was, uh, uh, it was uh, very shocking. Did, did you hear about that? Uh, I hear uh, probably not a news about uh, the caffeinato, the caffeinate, the uh, ask the decaffeinato. I think that it's uh, this news. Uh, and uh, uh, I'm not sure. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, there was there was a misunderstanding, and and it was it was really crazy how <laughs> how how people would really get on the street, and uh, he I think he had to pay uh, two and a half thousand euros fine. Uh, it was something like that, so he was actually fined by uh, uh, for the increased price. Mm -hmm. uh, but but good news, we have something like that in Germany as well. So uh, most horikas you could sue because they don't know, but they have to have two beverages that are cheaper than beer that are alcohol free and they usually yeah. only have one and uh, so <laughs> there there is sometimes curious laws that nobody knows and nobody respects um but uh, yeah I, i found it at least curious uh, to be in a time where someone is sued to increase uh, a product <laughs> in a moment where the entire world is getting more expensive and uh, even uh, let's say uh, a court is putting it through and putting him 2500 euros fine for increasing and it i think it was the decaffeinated espresso yeah. and and that is what leads us to our next speaker this is why i was asking i, I wanted to build a beautiful bridge to the yeah. decaffeination here <laughs> so uh, no one no one no one no one had seen it thank you again so much this is your applause thank you mariano thank you And uh, I think we also have your presentation. And are you okay that we share it with interested people? Yes, sure, sure. Oh, okay, thank you so much. Grazie. And uh, now we will go from west to east. So we will now switch from uh, from Milan uh, to Trieste. And uh, we welcome uh, Dr. Max Fabian from Demus. And uh, yeah, Max, ah, okay, we can already see you. That's beautiful. Yeah, I'm here. Hello, Stefan. Hi, hi. And hello, so everybody. And uh, hello, Max. We can hear you very loud. This this is this is excellent. Good news. And uh, I, I would just like to to uh, not even uh, take too much of the time, but just let you go. I think you 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 are set to be able to to share your screen and start the presentation. Just a few words. Uh, uh, those of you that that haven't heard of uh, Dr. Max Fabian, he is uh, also a coffee scientist and uh, he's specialized in uh, espresso decaffeination, but also in DNA analysis. So any strange specific uh, laboratory question you have about coffee, you can ask him. Ideally, when you go down to Trieste and you have it over some beautiful dinner and uh, a beautiful espresso. And uh, what is most astonishing about Max uh, is there is a, a fantastic fair in Trieste, the Trieste Espresso. And uh, whenever I was visiting in the past years, uh, uh, I was always impressed to get the best cup of espresso at his booth. And, uh, and that in a real espresso city, And I'm quite sure, I always ask him, is this seriously decaffeinated espresso? <laughs> Because we all know that normally a decaf is a real bad cup. It's something that makes you want to run away uh, um, or think of a warm beer uh, to explain it for Germans. So um, yeah, so something really bad. But he always had the best cup of espresso. So Max, I'm still waiting that maybe one year you will reveal that joke and just say, no, it was never. <laughs> But uh, <laughs> you always had the best cup no, of espresso. No, it was, uh, it was, always decaf. Okay, okay. So uh, that, that's always my, uh, uh, my suggestion for you. So first of all, go to Trieste. It's a beautiful city. And uh, second of all, also see that fair and uh, visit the booth because uh, uh, what you know here for decafs that we mostly have in Germany are not amusing, but uh, the, 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 the qualities that you can find there are really outstanding. That's why I asked Max to join us here today. So again, thank you so much uh, to, for your time and, and, and talking to us about espresso decaffeination. Uh, it's maybe not the biggest field of talks that uh, uh, might be in a, in a scientific uh, environment because I think it is often overseen, but I think it is real relevant to speak about it. And so, yeah, Max, please go ahead. We are thank really you, Stefan. Uh, just, just to add uh, about the su suing here in Italy, Uh, it was uh, in, in Firenze to Francesco Sanapo and his company. Uh, but the real reason was that he, he, sh he didn't uh, show uh, properly enough the price of that decaf. So the, uh, the problem was uh, 
not proper exhibition of the price that was the suing, not for the increasing of the price itself. But anyway, uh, that, that uh, <coughs> came to a, quite a, cer a certain debate on, on coffee prices. Uh, let me share my screen. So I share my presentation. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Desktop one, hopefully it's that one. Uh, just, I'm, I have to ask you some patience because uh, not sure I am able to share it here. Why not? No. Sorry, one second, I have a problem here in sharing. Give me one second more. I uh, have to quit and come back, sorry. Sorry, but I had to authorize my computer to share the screen. Uh, Stefan, the Zoom is uh, saying that I cannot share my screen because, okay, desktop one, desktop two, okay, finally, we are getting there. Sorry for this problem. Are you seeing my screen? Yes. Okay. So let's start with the presentation. First of all, let's let's say one thing. Uh, the uh, uh, decaf espresso, as as Stefan was saying before, not always decaf had that uh, famous name for quality. But uh, nowadays, decaf is, is quite growing. And uh, Mariano said it said before, people are uh, uh, starting more and more uh, to start it with COVID, unfortunately, to drink more and more coffee in-house. And one of the coffees they were drinking more and more in-house was decaf. Because, uh, and, and when they discovered that uh, uh, decaf can have a good taste, they continued uh, consuming uh, decaf. And this uh, brought quite uh, rapidly to an increase in consumption. So the uh, effect of COVID on decaf was at the end, an interesting increase in consumption. Uh, likely also because of uh, uh, capsules and pods, uh, which standardized preparation. And when you have a decaf capsule in house, you will, you will use it. So this, uh, and you will discover that it's a good coffee. But let's start from, 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 from the beginning of from caffeine, which is the main target of decaffeination. Uh, decaf, sorry. Uh, decaf, uh, caffeine is, uh, first of all, has no taste. Uh, caffeine is just bitterness, and bitterness uh, in coffee, in the, uh, in the, uh, uh, the, uh, it's not only brought by caffeine, but it's brought also by the roasting process. 
So at the end, if you take out the caffeine, you will not take out any flavor from the coffee. Uh, what's caffeine? Uh, chemically, it's an alkaloid, and uh, you find it in many plants. Uh, in coffee, yes, for sure, but in other ones like uh, cocoa, tea, guarana, mate, and other ones. And it's uh, in nature, it's a natural uh, defense for plants uh, from external aggressions. And this is one of the reasons why it's bitter. So, and for example, and, uh, if an insect goes uh, and eats the leaf, uh, he will uh, feel the bitterness and leave the leaf over there not eating it anymore. Uh, what is the effect on the human body? It's a mild stimulant to the nervous system. Uh, EFSA, uh, a few years ago, uh, did quite a, a, a work on it and recommended uh, a maximum of 400 milligrams per day of uh, caffeine uh, intake uh, for uh, uh, humans. Uh, adult humans, because the intake needs to be proportional to your uh, body weight. Uh, and the, how does caffeine work in your body? It uh, works as an adenosine antagonist. Uh, and the final effect, the adenosine, antag uh, adenosine is uh, what in your, uh, it's the enzyme in your uh, nervous systems that will bring the message that you are tired. Uh, the, the caffeine being an antagonist of the adenosine substantially postpones your, tired, your tiredness, your sensation of tiredness. Uh, excessive assumption uh, is, uh, uh, it's, it's not so nice uh, and can cause some serious uh, side effects. So minor ones like excitation and sleeping difficulty but we have not to forget that, uh, as many things in this world, uh, even though it's uh, an active uh, principle in pharmacy, uh, so has a lot of good effects uh, in small amounts, uh, if somebody uh, assume, uh, uh, intakes uh, something like 8 grams or 10 grams of caffeine, uh, will die. So it, as always, it's a matter of uh, quantities uh, uh, compared to your body weight. But uh, in small quantities, uh, caffeine has an excellent effect. But in big quantities, has not nice effects on the human body. Uh, here it's quite interesting uh, chart uh, coming from uh, uh, Coffee and Health. Uh, uh, where well, you can see uh, what are the average uh, contain, uh, contents, uh, uh, caffeine contents in the various be uh, beverage, beverages. Uh, normally, uh, an espresso cup will be around 80 to 100 uh, milligrams per cup. Uh, this is this chart, even though very much reliable, is a bit uh, optimistic. Anyway, you have a lots, lots and lots of, of uh, variables uh, uh, before to, to, to consider, uh, starting from the type of beans you are using, uh, Robusta versus Arabica, uh, the brewing, uh, the brewing ratio, uh, the, uh, the dimension of the cup, and so on. But as you can uh, clearly see, uh, decaffeinated coffee is in the very low range. So you will have a presence of caffeine, uh, but uh, 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 totally negligible uh, uh, for the effect in the, uh, for the human body. Totally negligible. Uh, as, you, as, you, uh, as you know, zero is a very hard figure to find in chemistry, uh, especially uh, getting uh, more uh, to better and better uh, in instruments to measure it as, and, and, as everything you will find something always some quantity but so the extraction is absolutely important uh, but not total uh, but again what uh, residues in the coffee is something that will have no effect uh, for the human body 
Uh, this is a picture of the caffeine that is extracted uh, in our plant. Uh, it's, it's, it's a physical extraction through a chemical media. Uh, so at the end, you will uh, find the, the, the crystals or the powder of caffeine out from, for, from the coffee. Uh, getting back to uh, caffeine in our, in our body, as I was saying, it's a dose-dependent action. Uh, which has to consider the body weight and the different types of uh, metabolisms. Uh, for example, normally uh, females have a more rapid uh, metabolic process for caffeine, but if they are pregnant, this lasts much, much, much longer. And this is likely the reason uh, for which uh, uh, pregnant uh, women will refuse normally uh, coffee because of the much uh, much uh, longer process uh, of metabolization of caffeine. Uh, we have also to consider that uh, we consume caffeine not only in coffee, but also in a lot of other drinks. Uh, for lunch, I had a Coke. And Coke is uh, like drinking coffee. I mean, the quantity, uh, if we go back to the chart, pre the previous chart of uh, caffeine and health, you will find it. But uh, if somebody wants my presentation, I will be happy to share it. So you can look at it whenever you want. But uh, you will, uh, you will uh, find that uh, uh, Coke has a very similar quantity of caffeine as a coffee has. Uh, espresso coffee, for example. So when you look at total intake in your body for caffeine, you need to consider not only coffee. Uh, uh, caffeine anyway does not create addiction. So if you are used to drink, uh, to have an intake of caffeine, uh, you will also be able to quit. On the other hand side, you will get habituation. So for a certain period, after stopping, uh, assuming, uh, in taking uh, caffeine, you will suffer of some side effects. But at the end, these side effects will cease and you will get back to your normal uh, status. Uh, so why, why should you drink the caffeinated coffee? Uh, not only espresso, you can be drinking in many ways, but then I will go deeper into the espresso decaf. Uh, first of all, it's a solution for, for people who would like to drink more coffees. Uh, everybody has, for the reasons I've said before, uh, a certain threshold uh, for caffeine. And uh, if, you want, if you get to that threshold, but you really do like caffeine, yeah, you do like coffee, but you do not want to uh, have any more caffeine, you can switch to decaf. Uh, well, if this, uh, but the consequence uh, uh, for this is that you need to drink a good decaf, because if you drink it, you drink it really basically for the pleasure. Uh, you know that uh, coffee, is, has, uh, uh, coffee has a lot of nutraceuticals, uh, but you, in that case, you will not drink it for the caffeine. So you will drink it for the other nutraceuticals, but are, uh, I would say people normally would not think about that and normally would like just the flavor of coffee. So you need to offer a good coffee decaffeinated. Uh, but not only, uh, not only people that are already drinking regular coffee will drink uh, uh, as, a sec uh, as, a, as a choice uh, for uh, drinking more uh, decaf, but also people that r really do not, uh, 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 do not uh, tolerate uh, caffeine uh, because they have health pro problems or uh, for other reasons, but uh, they just uh, do like coffee and so this, uh, they will take decaf. Um, there are people that also have heart disease, high blood pressure, and the effect of caffeine can be, might be uh, negative. So decaf is a solution. Uh, then uh, there is also a, 
not always well known uh, uh, side effect for certain decaffeination processes, uh, such as uh, our uh, methane chloride process, uh, that uh, you will reduce uh, wax content, 5 uh, carbidoxytryptamides content. Uh, these are uh, irritant substances uh, for the gastric mucosa. Uh, thus, if you will drink that decaf, uh, you will uh, have as a side effect uh, uh, not uh, not uh, not no no irritation for uh, for the stomach. Um, if if that is the case, if that is the case, uh, uh, and what uh, it's assured in the case of de-waxed coffee, as it as this product is called, that might be a, uh, gathered to de to decaffeinated coffee. So it's it's a it's a coffee that is both decaf and de-waxed. Uh, you will need to check and not, not be above two hundred fifty parts per millions of uh, five CHT. So the carbon um, Normally, you need to consider that the coffee has uh, four to eight times more as a content. Uh, so I was saying, uh, what, what is decaffeinated coffee? Well, uh, it's a coffee where almost all the caffeine is removed after an extraction process. Uh, what is the residual content in Europe? Usually. It's, first of all, it's a national law. It's not a, a, a UE law, uh, even though UE rules a lot of uh, our uh, food stuff. In this case, uh, it's left uh, to uh, countries or regions, whatever. And uh, the majority uh, in Europe will say that a, ca a decaf coffee has, needs to have a caffeine content not uh, of no more than 0.1%. Uh, as you likely know, uh, coffee will have usually between one up to three, four percent. In rare, rare cases, normally we are between one and two percent of, of, of caffeine. Uh, in the USA, uh, the request, uh, uh, the good manufacturing practices request uh, a 97 percent removal, but this is a bit more viable, but at the end, you get more or less to the same results. Again, no human, no influence on the human physiology with so little caffeine. Uh, I will not last long on, on, the, on the different methods. If you want, you can ask, but uh, there are four methods that are authorized in Europe. Uh, officially authorized, this is authorized by the UE in this case. Um, and it's, uh, uh, the, the, the four methods are water, ethyl acetate, carbon dioxide that can, might be supercritical or liquid, and methane chloride or dichloromethane. So these are the four, uh, uh, the four substances that can be used uh, for caffeine extraction and that are perfectly safe uh, and uh, checked and authorized by the UEA. I insist on, on this point, uh, as, you, as you know, our uh, loved union, uh, beloved union is uh, quite severe in food uh, stuff production. Um, now we, we can come to the, to the main point of my presentation, which is uh, uh, quality for decaf espresso. Uh, cup quality is, uh, as you know, as, as, as for coffee, I mean, we are, we are always talking about coffee. We are talking about co a coffee which has uh, uh, no caffeine. Uh, caffeine, again, is only bitterness. So at the end, what you have to look uh, are more or less the same things that you will look for a regular coffee with certain uh cares that you might you should have. Uh, obviously, this is a very obvious thing I'm saying. You need to be careful in the choice of raw material. Uh, when you look at the raw material, you need to think also of the effect of the of decaffeination at the end after, after the process. So there are some coffees that are more uh, uh, more keen, more adapt to decaffeination than other ones. 
even though you can decaf everything. Uh, you have to be careful to the roasting and grinding process from, for packaging and conservation because conservation is one of the key issues for serving a proper decaf. Uh, decaf has a lower consumption compared to regular coffee. Uh, thus, uh, if it's not properly preserved, you will have a stale old coffee in your cup. And this is a risk. Uh, obviously, you need to get a proper cup extraction, which might be a more, bit more difficult, but you, you, you should and you, you must get it out. Uh, and you have to look about, again, as I was saying before, of the, for, uh, uh, on the impact of the method of decaffeination, which is there, even though you should get absolutely the same quality in the cup at the end. Uh, our goal is to obtain a coffee which uh, maintains its initial quality. Uh, it's, the, it's not only ours, it's, it's for all decaf producers. Uh, uh, and the ultimate one, it's uh, to, again, you should get out, if you get a regular coffee and you get a decaf coffee, the aim should be to get uh, something that you are not able to distinguish. And this, I assure you, it is possible. Uh, and we did blind tests that did confirm this. Um, how? Look uh, at, the, uh, at, at the green bean, where you start from. You can decaf everything, I was saying. You can decaf as a Robusta, you can decaf uh, uh, Arabica, you might decaf any other species of green coffee you want. Uh, it might be easier, might be a bit more difficult, but uh, at the end, uh, the caffeine will be extracted. Uh, the, the, the effect in the cup would be slightly different, so you need to consider this uh, for the final result. Uh, but more than this even is the roasting process. Uh, the roasting process is delicate in the case of decaffeinated coffee. Uh, it's, it's a proce already processed uh, uh, coffee. Uh, decaf uh, uses water, uh, uses temperatures. So uh, when, you when you roast it, the effect that you will get uh, in the roast, the curve, the roasting curve will be different, will be different than a regular one. And uh, uh, the appearance, uh, external appearance might be very, very different from the internal appearance. So when you look at it, when you look at the roasting curve, you need to set a proper roasting curve for decaf and don't use the usual one for a regular coffee. Roasting Decaf is different from roasting a non-decaffeinated coffee. Uh, if you don't do that, you might be, get out of it an uh, uh, un, 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 undesired uh, effects, uh, such as uh, stringent taste, uh, rough taste, and other ones. Uh, grinding is also uh, another story. Uh, when, uh, for the same reason in reality, uh, because you get uh, decaf coffee will be more normally, more friable. So the, uh, if you analyze the, the particles uh, once, uh, once grinded, uh, the Gauss curve you will get out of it, uh, it will, be, uh, tend to, uh, will tend to be more enlarged, uh, but you want uh, to have a, sh a sharp uh, curve because you want to get a homogeneous uh, roasting uh, distribution, uh, sorry, uh, particles distribution. Uh, so this means that all the majority of, 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 the, of, the, of, the, of the powder needs to be of the same dimension to get the proper extraction. Uh, the problem is that being more friable, if you don't grind properly, the smaller, or the bigger uh, particles will result in a improper 
uh, extraction once uh, uh, once uh, uh, viewed. Uh, obviously, also uh, as much as for regular coffee, best is to grind it just before the preparation. But please consider that uh, degradation in uh, decaf coffee is a bit more rapid. First and second. Uh, the, uh, the, the fact that uh, decaf coffee is used less uh, makes more likely to drink uh, old stale coffee. So you need to be to take care of this aspect uh, with attention. Uh, oh, clearly, if you use uh, single dose preparation, this uh, will uh, simplify life. If uh, especially if the single dose uh, is uh, uh, packed uh, one at one. And so you really open it at the moment and you will get out of it uh, a, 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 proper, a proper drink. Also, you, you standardize extraction. Extraction in the case of single dose will not be at the same level of an espresso machine, but uh, of a good espresso machine. I mean, a good extraction in the espresso machine, but for sure, a single dose uh, system will be better than a bad extraction even in an espresso machine. Uh, conservation and packaging. Uh, well, I, I think I've already mentioned this uh, aspect. Uh, so careful for the a bit more rapid uh, degradation process. Uh, uh, packing packaging is fundamental for uh, for decaffeinated coffee. Uh, but I, I, at the end, even though a slightly more rapid. It is more or less the same situation that you will also have in regular coffee, apart from that in regular coffee you have a, usually a bit more rapid consumption. Uh, so you need to be careful at the same way. Uh, correct grinding, uh, better if separated and forcefully separated because if not you will have uh, the risk of, of uh, uh, um, uh, mixing uh, regular and decaf thus not getting out of a real decaf out of it if you measure the caffeine just a bit of regular coffee will uh, will uh, be enough uh, to raise uh, the caffeine content uh, above what the legal limit is uh, so you need to avoid contamination and uh, also to guarantee, again, the specific granulometry for the correct extraction that we are searching for. Um, normally, in, in decaf, uh, if you get this re really just the same before and after, uh, you would have a slighter, slightly lighter crema, a uh, bit more acid and uh, 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 ba ba uh, taste balance, uh, and a slightly lower body. body. Uh, but these differences can be easily corrected in a proper uh, blending with a proper blending and a proper roasting. Uh, so the final product uh, will not be recognized. Uh, the body loss normally, the, it's, it's relatively negligible, uh, normally due to the box removal, not, not necessary only. Uh, and again, uh, roasting and blending is a good way to balance this. Uh, another aspect uh, that you need to consider is that uh, decaffeination uh, can also improve uh, coffee in the case of defects, uh, because uh, some defects uh, can be extracted. We have uh, a few patents uh, in, in, in demos for, for this type of, uh, of uh, effect on, on the green bean. And it's, it, it's definitely there and can solve a lot of problems for coffee. But on the other hand side, we want to avoid of, uh, decaffeinating bad coffees, because if you decaf a bad coffee, you will still have a bad coffee at the end and you will not drink a good decaf. Uh, this is the end of my presentation. I, I, I am available for uh, potential questions. Uh, I hope everything was uh, clear and I thank you for your patience uh, listening uh, to me. Yeah, thank you so much, Max. I hope I 
can be heard again? Yes. Excellent. Thank you so much. So uh, are there any questions? Yes, from yeah. Kenny. Wait a second. Here we go. Hi, can I ask a question? Sure. Um, Dr. Max? Yes, Kenny. please. Yes, um, I, I actually drink quite, you mentioned that the, the soft drink it has a certain amount of uh, caffeine in the soft drink. I actually drink quite a lot of Coke Zero, uh, normally like a can before I sleep at night. I'm sure Dr. Soss know that. So would that, would that actually um, affect my, the quality of my sleep? One well, can of Coke Zero. It, it depends if the zero stands for caffeine or just stands for sugar. If the okay. zero stands for sugar uh, and has caffeine, uh, the potential impact uh, to your sl sleeping uh, is there. On the other hand side, it depends also how you metabolize caffeine. Uh, you might be somebody that really metabolizes well the, 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 the caffeine. And it also depends in, in which situation you are uh, in taking caffeine. In some situation, you will have a higher effect from caffeine. In other situation, also looking at your, your beer rhythm, uh, you will have lower effects of, 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 of the caffeine because you just, again, caffeine postpones your sensation of tiredness. So yes, the, the caffeine should be there if the zero stands for sugar. Uh, and uh, potentially, yes, it, your sleeping might be affected. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, thank you so much for the presentation. But my question is about the consumer acceptability about the caffeinated coffee. You are asking if, uh, how the consumer accepts uh, decaf. Well, again, uh, decaf is, is uh, a, ca a coffee where uh, caffeine was extracted. So for the rest, it's a perfectly safe and proper uh, product, uh, even in some, uh, for some aspects, even better than the regular one, if some defects were there and were extracted after the process. So if the consumer is properly informed, I don't see any problem in accepting it. Uh, on the other hand side, uh, I perfectly know that when you say I decaffeinate with, with methane chloride, this is a bad word that really not always is uh, happily heard, for example, or uh, ethyl acetate. Ethyl acetate is a bit, bit more smooth, but uh, methane chloride or dichloromethane is a bit more harsh on the, hand, on the other hand side. But at the end, if you understand that uh, methane chloride is extracted of 40 degrees centigrade uh, and in a closed circuit, because we always use the same uh, methane chloride for decaffeination, it runs in a closed circuit and so we use always that one. Uh, you can easily understand that it doesn't remain at all in, the in, the, in coffee. Uh, at all, again, in chemistry, <laughs> the threshold is lowering, lowering. So the at all is, is relative, but you will not have any methane chloride that can do any damage at all in your body. On the other hand side, I understand that. So this is why, for example, in Demos, we also propose water decaffeination. Uh, water decaffeination uh, is done uh, with, uh, uh, with the uh, uh, water and uh, activated carbon. And this is mainly a, a marketing uh, tool that we offer to our uh, uh, customers to uh, close the, cir the, the circle and uh, for the customers that really don't like the word methane chloride, they can choose water and activate the carbon process, which is the same process that, well, mainly it's the same process that all the water processors are using. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, another question is that in 2021, I was severely insomnic. Uh, condition in which I can't sleep properly. So a uh, doctor suggested me to don't take caffeine products like coffee, tea, etc. But uh, if I think about waking up in morning and open my eyes to go to school, I need coffee. And if I choose the caffeinated coffee as a solution, so I don't think so that it's give me the same kick. No, I mean, if you search the kick of caffeine, no. 
But if you search the kick of taste, yes. Okay. <laughs> this is what I are searching for. Okay. The taste Thank is you. there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Welcome. Any other question here in the room? Yes. One more. Okay, thank you. Uh, my question is about um, off flavor. Um, do you experience um, during processing like, or after processing? Um, do you experience any off flavor? What are the sources and how um, is it being managed um, in the process? Well, we, we are able to, for example, uh, extract physically with uh, our process. We uh, trichloranizole or geosmine, which are present in the coffee and which are uh, cause and, and all are, are uh, coming from uh, uh, fungins. Uh, and uh, th these are extracted with our method. And uh, the effect is uh, a lowering or a, a nulling of the, of the defect in the coffee. We are also able, in case uh, okra toxin is present in a coffee to extract it. So mainly defects, uh, not only, but mainly defects in coffee derive from fungin organism, fungin metabolites and so on. Uh, and uh, with the process, especially with the process or with the uh, methane chloride, you will have a very good extraction of, of the, of, of the of these uh, undesired sub, uh, substances. Uh, and we did uh, patent uh, these types of uh, processes, uh, specifically targeting these, uh, these uh, ochratoxin, or again, uh, sorry, ochratoxin is one of it, but of them, but uh, including uh, geosmine or trichronizole or other ones. And the steam effect also is there because you ought to get uh, decaffeinated uh, coffee, you need to steam it. This also will uh, uh, lower normally the, the, the effect of the defects. Okay, thank you. Any other question in the room? Yeah, there's one more. Just a second. I need to walk. Here. Hello, Max. Thank you. Um, as a big fan of your decaf coffees, but also a fan of varieties and diversification in coffee world, uh, I don't know if you heard of the variety Laurina. Yes. Maybe. Yeah. Do you think that, uh, as we can see, the diversification in coffee world is growing? Is is the Laurina, for example, or any, let's say, uh, similar varieties or even species, a danger to your business in the in the future? No, I don't see that uh, issue, at least yet, but I don't see it in the long term. Uh, it is very difficult uh, uh, to have uh, uh, in, important productions, meaning, where, and when I say important, I say uh, big quantities um, of coffees with a low, uh, very low, uh, quantity of uh, caffeine. Uh, the lower uh, uh, caffeine uh, coffees uh, are usually, I would say, 0 0.6, 0 0.7 percent of caffeine, which is far from being decaffeinated. So it's 0 0.1. And also, you struggle to get, uh, I mean, you can get out of it uh, a good coffee and with decent quantities, but you really struggle. So, uh, and, and uh, I don't see this as a risk uh, for decaffeination. Uh, we do study also the genetic part, as uh, Stefan said before, uh, we are careful to all the works that are coming out from it, uh, but uh, thanks God for my business, at least. Uh, the decaffeine is again, a natural defense for the plant. And if you nullify it, you will really not be able to get decent qualities and decent quantities of coffee out of it. Thank you. Looking forward for your great coffees in future. Okay. Any more questions? Or even in the web? I don't know. Something in Thailand. Where's Thailand? Kenny, is Thailand there? Okay, that is a clear answer. Otherwise, we would hear Pat now. 
Okay. So, uh, any more question? That means I think you were clear. Oh no, uh, Alexia, one, 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 more, one more. There is one more. I have okay, one last question, and then I know you have to go to to a late dinner probably at the <laughs> Adria Club. <laughs> No, anyway, it would be lunch, but <laughs> no, no, not, I did I have lunch already. So don't Max, not that much a question, but there was a contribution in the chat. Someone asked if you ever made a kind of blind testing uh, at a at a huge scale, and what was the resonance of this? Did the people detect that this was a decaffeinated coffee? Because you said the flavor is about the same and it's only missing the coffee in. But did you figure it out? And did you make testings with greater groups of people? I think the question in the chat was around uh, about that. And I thought it was an interesting question. So I just want to put it on the table again. Yes, we, we thank you for the question. Uh, yes, yes, we did. Uh, even though we might go wider, but uh, you know that the more you wide the, the, the public, the more difficult uh, it gets uh, to be. But uh, yes, we did. And uh, the statistic uh, result uh, was that it's uh, not recognizable. You cannot uh, recognize uh, decaf and, and uh, regular coffee. Uh, the major, the, I mean, it was statistically elaborated. It was uh, there was no uh, significant difference in, to, in the two. Yes, so actually, this goes in line with, with what I wanted to ask. I always wanted to try. Sorry, to... I I can't hear you. Hello. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Perfect. So it's, it goes in line with my question. I would love to do a, a blind test of the very same coffee, once with caffeine and once without. And uh, so far I wasn't able to get some samples. <laughs> <laughs> Could anyone help me? Oh, well. <laughs> 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 Yeah. But the, the answer would be Opa. The answer would be yes. It's it's, it's not difficult to get uh, to yeah, get uh, the coffees. Okay. So I will I just have to. Do you sell this very same coffee or? Well, I, I it's something that you need to 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 organize properly but it's uh, it might be done i mean if you if we, we get parcels to 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 get decaffeinated so it uh, it's uh, easy to get a, a sample before and after but again if you get for an expert maybe if you get the same coffee before and the very same coffee before and after you might be able to tell the difference if you go for a blend and you properly prepare the blend, you will not be able to say, to yeah. express the difference. Mm. I don't know if you can hear me as well again. Yes. yes. Okay. So there would be an option, uh, Max. I know you just uh, decaffeinated for us the Naranjo Natural from Mexico, yeah. which is the natural Catuai, and we have the same also not decaffeinated. So here's here here's the option. If someone wants to taste directly, it's the same field, the same shadow plant, the same soil, the same, everything, same, 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 same. Only one part of it went to Tiriesta to be decaffeinated and the other part was here. So these are like twins. Okay. So if, if, if you want it, you can contact us. And, and then if you have any specific questions, of course, you can come back to Max about it. Uh, regarding the decaf, if it's about the growing, I have to connect you with Mexico. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. So I will get in contact with you. Thank you. Okay. Much. So then, okay. any more questions? Thank you. Thank you. Anyone from the online audience or anyone from uh, the room? Otherwise, I think we will also all go for lunch. I think it was a good idea uh, not to say dinner. You see, this is, this is what is happening uh, when you focus on the wrong things. So yeah. again, Max, thank you so much for your presentation, for your valuable time. And uh, yeah, I think it was good to have these four presentations. They have all been coming from very different fields of uh, the espresso market. So we gave it a good thought before to touch different things that still connected. And I think it was visible that really the different 
uh, perspectives connected. So I hope this will be a start for some good discussions we are having now here. And um, yeah, thank you again for everyone joining us online uh, and for everyone here in the room. Everyone that is here can now speak to uh, Enyo. So Enyo will answer all questions for all the experts. <laughs> and uh, yeah, otherwise uh, we'll gladly share the presentations. Max, maybe that is the last question. If you could also uh, send us your presentation, then we can also sure. share it amongst the interested people. And sure. yeah, thank you again, Max. And then, uh, uh, yeah, uh, I hope you can also go for some nice lunch now. No, I, I did already, so I'm digesting. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. So see, yeah, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't so wrong with, with my guess you would go for dinner next. <laughs> okay, excellent. Thank you so much, Max. No, and, uh, we'll talk to you. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Still one. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. Thank you.